when we hit the quarantine, just like everyone else kind of got into cooking a little bit um, from that. I used to always help out in the kitchen when I was younger with my mom and stuff, but I never really took like an initiative with it. And I was kind of at a loss of like what I wanted to do. So when the quarantine hit, I ended up uh, kind of learning to, to cook a lot more and I fell in love with it. I was born with a rare neuromuscular condition called myofibular myopathy, um, which is a low muscle tone condition, which in simple terms just means that I am extremely weak. So, um, as the disease progresses, it will affect me more. So as of right now, I am wheelchair bound. I'm capable of moving a little bit, but I'm still in a, in a chair. So for that aspect of it, it definitely has impacted the way that I cook and um, to, I've had to adapt so many things in my kitchen. I can't reach the stove, so I got an electric stove that I can have at the table. Certain um, knives are very heavy, so my hands get tired stuff like that, you know, things have to be modified and adapted. So it's been definitely a challenge for that part of it. I had seen a lot of people posting stuff uh, just through the years and stuff. I followed a bunch of different cooking accounts just from always, I've always followed them. And there's also a very large uh, community of disabled people, specifically on social media, who contact people from all over the world. So that was one of the main reasons why I created it. I wanted to, to be able to connect to that community. I kind of just cook whatever I feel like, you know, just for dinner that night or whatever my family wants. I mainly cook like Asian fusion, um, some Italian, but not too much. I cook very healthy foods usually. Over the summer and into September and October as well, I was doing um, these cooking classes with the New York City Wine and Food Festival that they would run different classes and you would pay a certain amount of money for like a ticket and you'd get a Zoom link, the recipe, like the ingredient list, everything like that. So I had done a few of them with Rachel Ray and um, one of her assistants actually uh, reached out to me because I had been trying to promote my account a little bit on there. I would ask in the chat on Zoom, you know, just for them to follow me, give me a shout out. She got to know my name and eventually they reached out to me and asked for me to be on the show. I was asked to participate in her 2,500th episode special. It was me and I believe seven other participants, all virtually on Zoom. And we got to make um, a beef pot pie uh, dish with her. And it was, it was on, on TV on, I believe it was November 9th. Honestly, it has been a dream come true. I cannot imagine something like this, like in my wildest dreams, would have never thought of something like this. Um, and I've met people from, from Canada. I've met people from California. Uh, I've gotten in contact with cousins who I haven't spoken to in years from Italy who have found me through my, my account, which is insane. One, one thing that I would like as a, a career goal in the, the future would have to be that I would want to have my own cooking show. And that's not just because I was on Rachel Ray. It did help me realize it, but that's just been something that's been ongoing because I have a love for teaching, fundraising, and cooking, and also advocating. So it would put all, of, all four of those topics all into one for me. I definitely would hope like, just for it to grow even more than what I have. Just that same, the same message that I keep saying, for it to grow, you know, to show other people with disabilities, you know, it could be a young kid, because I didn't know this was something I could do. So if it reaches another young kid, whether disabled or not even, just to inspire them to be able to say, you can do this, you know, the same way that I'm doing it. It, you know, it's not impossible. Uh, I'm doing it, so you can do it too. <laughs>